The volcano, Aya Fiapla Urkul, as I'm told it is pronounced, has been spewing out more toxic pollutants than all human activity since the beginning of time. So says the man who governed Washington State when Mount St. Herup- uh, Helens erupted. Is that an accurate statistic? Michio Kaku, professor of theoretical physics at City University in New York, is the author of the book, Physics of the Impossible. He joins the company. Professor, is that an accurate statistic? It's a little high. However, a typical eruption releases about 100 million tons of sulfur dioxide and hydrofluoric acid into the air. That's equivalent to the entire industrial pollution output of Europe for one year. Hmm. So we're talking about enormous amount of pollution. And if this volcano sits off Big Brother, that is a neighboring volcano, then we're talking about making Mount St. Helen look like a firecracker. Really? This neighboring volcano has 10 times the power of this little volcano that's paralyzing all of Europe right now. Three times in the past, uh, both volcanoes went off simultaneously, one triggering the other. That's the nightmare scenario. But is there any way for you physicists to predict something like that? It's very difficult. Uh, We think these two volcanoes may be linked. They're 12 miles apart, this little one and big brother called Katla. And three times in the last thousand years, both went off. And the devastation could be beyond imagination. Agriculture in Europe could be paralyzed. There could be mass migrations. There could be starvation. One quarter of the population of Iceland starved to death in 1783 with another eruption. We haven't seen something like this in modern times. But you can't predict it. You, you, can can't just, predict. You, can, you can say it's on the horizon. It is a possibility. It's witchcraft. We are monitoring Katla very carefully now. Yeah. To make sure, right now, nothing's happening. We don't want to set up any panic. But nothing's happening. Okay, you say, okay, you right say right nothing's now. happening. I mean, no little tremors, no little puffs of steam, nothing like that. Little puffs of steam, but not much else. But remember, three times in the past, one triggered the other, and this is ten times bigger than its little brother. How could, how could that be that there's no way to tell? I mean, this, this boggles my mind, right? Because it, it's... It doesn't just happen instantaneously. It's got to, as Stuart's saying, tremor up from the ground, smoke starts coming. I mean, yeah, yeah I'm a right? vol- I mean, volcanologist, I right? Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, the if that's is, the case, I worry about Rainier and Mount Loa and we, we see the tremors, but we cannot connect the dots. We don't have a CAT scan of a volcano. <clears throat> Volcanoes are deep underground. Some of the magma pools are miles underground. We have no way to x-ray a volcano. That's the problem. All right, can you tell us when the, this, uh, I'm going to pronounce it again, Aya Fiapla Urkul, mm-hmm. any idea of when that will stop erupting? Well, this is a repeat of 1821. We're actually following the script of what happened back then. It lasted 13 months. 13 months of sputtering, off and on, off and on. And that's what it's going to be like, a cat and mouse game. All air controllers are going to track the cloud, shoot airplanes over the cloud, around the cloud, under the cloud. It's going to be like that for weeks. Could it re- I'm sorry, Chris, you go oh, ahead. I was going to ask about the toxic ash that you mm-hmm. were talking about. When this falls to, to earth and falls on farmland, I mean, does, uh, do plants grow back through this? Does it become part of the soil again, or is it, is it harder to cultivate? Uh, it becomes part of the soil, but it's hydrofluoric acid. And the fluorine poisons a lot of domestic livestock. And in 1783, over half, over half of all livestock perished because of fluorine poisoning, setting off mass famine in Iceland. One quarter of the population died of starvation. Even Europe was pummeled by the hydrofluoric acid. And Benjamin Franklin was there in Paris, actually, to witness it. And some people think it helped to set off the French Revolution. Well, wait, 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 wait. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. wow. There was so was much. Fine revolution. There was, there was so much hardship on the peasantry for years after the 1783 eruption. Many historians say that this helped, helped to push over the French Revolution. However, however um, it, it could, could it not lead to some degree of global cooling? Because you've got this great big cloud the sun can't get through. Yes, but it's minor. If you calculate how much sunlight is being reflected back into outer space, you find that it's relatively minor. Mount Pinatuba, which was much bigger, did lower the temperature of the Earth briefly. And from that, we can then estimate what a gigantic explosion might do or what, or what pollution will do. Mount Pinatubo is the gold standard that we use. What about the other side of this whole thing? Uh, we haven't heard the alarmists on the global warming side. I mean, has anyone connected the dots and say that man's activity had something to do with this? 
Well, we think that it's not that Mother Nature is taking revenge on us for our human activities. We are encroaching on Mother Nature. There were no transatlantic flights in 1821. Oh. Uh, there were no human developments all over Europe in a vibrant agriculture. But whether we didn't have airplanes or not, would this have still happened at this time? Uh, well, yeah, these, well, these volcanic eruptions take place on a cycle of centuries. So in but, some sense, we were overdue for another eruption but, but in Iceland. Doesn't this volcanic eruption put human activity in better perspective? I mean, if one eruption can spew out all these toxic pollutants, equivalent to one year's worth of output from Europe, Europe. Mm -hmm. that put human activity in a better perspective, doesn't it? Well, you begin to realize that Mother Nature has shown who's boss, and we can now calibrate and see one year's worth of pollution coming right out of us on evening television. So well, in that sense, we can put it into perspective. But remember, it's an, awful lot of, it's an awful lot of pollution, and it is poisonous. It gets into agriculture. It could spark famines, migrations. It's all happened in the past. It's in the history books. Um, it was a pleasure having you with us, Michio Kaku. That was fascinating stuff, and we're all scared to death. Thanks very much for joining us. We appreciate it. <laughs> okay.